Hi friends, so welcome again to the class. So in the last lecture we had you know uh, started with segmentation, targeting and positioning and we uh, tried to understand why segmentation is even important and how segmentation differs right. Although we have not gone in depth, but today we will be doing it. So, how it differs uh, you know in the B2C and the B2B market right and why even uh, somebody should do segmentation. So, we tried to answer a few questions in the last class and uh, how competition also affects segmentation we try to answer those things. So, today let us begin the class with a very nice example you know as you know India is one of the you know economies which is growing at a very rapid pace and the startup culture thanks to the present government in India, it has given a lot of boost to the startup culture in India and uh, there are many startups which have become really they have flourished and they become big in the Indian uh, in the global market uh, place right. So, one such case is uh, what uh, we are going to start this class with. So, this case is about uh, a company called Udan. Now, Udan I have titled it Udan the B2B disruptor right. Now, this is a company started with uh, you know by some few ex Flipkart promoters right. So, the uh, ex Flipkart uh, employees basically. Uh, so, the promoters are from you know uh, ex Flipkart. So, they were working with Flipkart. So, Vaibhav Gupta and all and uh, this company became the fastest unicorn in India and it was only inception was done in 2016 right. This company started as a logistic platform for buyers and sellers in staple products like rice, lentils, etc., electronics and apparels and for maybe almost a year's time they stuck to only the logistic uh, part right where they focused on understanding the supply chain uh, system in the market and all. And uh, within a short span after that it created a you know an entire database of buyers and sellers in the marketplace. And then in a short span of time they onboarded almost 2 lakh sellers and buyers on their platform right. Today you know this company has started even giving offering incentives and promotional schemes to resellers to clear their inventories and all. And they are focusing largely on the marketplace and logistics and even they are thinking of starting a new kind of business which is lending right. So, they would uh, provide uh, financial support to the uh, onboarded uh, you know uh, partners right. So, by doing this Udan has really disrupted the B2B market space right in India and it has created a, a challenge for many uh, companies right. So, this company has why they could be successful the question is why they could be successful because first of all they had little knowledge about the industry and after that they started getting deeper into the market and understanding who are the buyers and who are the sellers and they not only onboarded buyers but also the manufacturers or the sellers right. So, so by offering both buyers and sellers the space and they started taking they st they made their money through only a transaction in between right. So, this company has provided enough space and they have created an intense competition in the in the B2B market right. So, this gives us a very clear understanding that if somebody understands the market or the segments that they are catering automatically their performance would enhance would be better because they can create individual strategies for the various segments ok. Now, the question is how do you identify a segment? How do you identify your best B 2 B prospect right? Now, there are 5 so let us say we are showing finger on this person. So, this is the best why not this why not this person this person why not them. So, the question is test of a good segment a good segment should always have this 5 pass this 5 you know checklists what are those first it should be measurable. So, when you talk about a segment that whatever segment you are talking about you should be in a position to measure that segment that means what is the potential of that segment what is the size of that segment. So, and how much we can make business in it 
that should be measurable. So, some quantifiable measure should be there. Now, the second question that emerges is whatever the measurable thing part of it you did, is it substantial? Really, can you make a business out of it? Can you really make enough uh, profit out of it? So, that is to be checked if it is substantial or not, right. If it is not substantial, obviously, you would not target that segment. Third, maybe it is substantial, but then it is not accessible to you or if it is accessible, then at what cost it is accessible to you. So, every company needs to identify that accessibility part. How accessible is that customer to me, right. Now, for example, just imagine, suppose you are a seller you are a manufacturer who is selling let us say certain auto parts or let us say some steel or some let us say chemical or something and you are positioned in a place which is quite far from let us say the port right or the harbor. Now, in such a situation maybe the market is not highly accessible to you because obviously the transportation cost will increase. So, those things are important for a marketer to understand where they are and where they are located and how close the industries that they are targeting are to them, right. Maybe if uh, there, ha there has to be a trade off they have to make, right. Fourth point is, if, is it differentiable by is the segment differentiable that means, is there some clear positioning or clear differentiation point when you are targeting this segment that means, is the segment, segment separate from the other segments that you are thinking, right. So, and finally, is it actionable that means, can I really develop you know uh, take an action that means, can I uh, uh, can I go for a sell or can I target these customers or not is it is it uh, possible or not. So, these are the 5 points that generally any any company should look in when you are testing a segment right. So, a good segment will have a tick for all the points right. If any one of this is not working then you cannot say it is a good segment right. Now, before we uh, move further, let us have a small discussion on B2C versus B2B segmentation. Now, when you talk about B2C, we are more easily we are we can understand because those are the products which we deal with every day in our everyday life. But when we are talking about the B2B products, many of them might be ones which you are not even you do not even know right, you and me we do not know right. So, we are not uh, directly involved with such products. So, in terms of characteristics, let us say in terms of let us say the target market. So, if you see B2C which is a generally low involvement product, B2Cs are generally low involvement and B2Bs are high involvement products. So, B2C is a larger market whereas, B2B is a smaller niche market right. Who are the purchasers? In the B2C it could be an individual and here the purchasers could be a buying center as we have seen multiple people involved in the buying process. So, how is the buying process happening here? It is a single step. So, somebody goes to the shop buys a let us say candy is a single uh, step. Here, it is a multiple step approach because you know that you have to float a proposal, a quotation and then you know get a quotation, get the desired information and then uh, you know ask your check your inventory and the entire process of purchasing is a very multiple step process ok. What about the sales cycle? It is a very short sales cycle right, but here it is a very longer sales cycle because the time taken to sell a you know B 2 B product is very time consuming because obviously, the complexity and the value of the product. So, it is too much of it is a very long uh, time process that goes in. For the sales driver now recognition and re uh, repetition. So, the awareness about the product and brand loyalty right and here we talk about when you talk about the sales driver, what drives the sales? It is about the relationship and the kind of quality or information that the product has, ok. So, what is the basis for this market segmentation? Now, basis for segmenting the consumer market, basis for segmenting the business market. So, let us start with the consumer market just to get a glimpse a basic idea. So, basis for segmenting the consumer market is geographic segmentation that means, what is the place that you are targeting, what kind of a place it is a very let us say in terms of a hilly place, a, a plain, a uh, cold area or a very hot area, what kind of a uh, place are you talking about. Demographically 
what kind of customers are you talking about for example the customer might be young people in the age group of let's say uh, 10 to 20 25 right or could be senior citizens maybe in the age group of let's say for some products in the age group of 55 plus 60 plus okay Psychographic segmentation is the thought process that the people have, what kind of people they are, what kind of lifestyle they want to leave, right? what kind of lifestyle they want to enjoy, how do they leave. Nowadays people have developed a different kind of lifestyle which was not prevalent in India a few decades back. So nowadays you can think of products like fast moving products like eatables even like Maggi noodles and all which uh, have become a daily part of our uh, you know food system. But earlier days there was proper you know uh, mothers used to give time to prepare something and they uh, cooking was a separate story altogether. And what kind of a lifestyle how do you live today you are you have an access to several uh, you know channels and uh, you know what not information and you spend your time in watching you know going to parties and all this. So things are changing right. So the psychological behavior also is changing. Some people are religious in nature, some are very, uh, you know, very uh, fashion uh, st uh, style oriented. These are the different things and behavioral issues like for example, some would like to buy, uh, if I go to the market, I would like to buy for example, for a week's time uh, my, you know, eatables and all. But somebody else would uh, like to buy, uh, go for to the market frequently and buy, in, consume in small uh, quantities. So, and what the frequency, how much, what kind of purchase you make. So, all these things are a part of the segmentation process, right. So, look at it, demographics, age, gender income, marital status, your ethnic background. When you talk about geographics, it is local, regional, national, international, psychographics, activities, attitude, your personality and values that you hold, right. Some people may be very fashion oriented, but they are very more, you know, ethical in nature. So, they do not want to, they are very disciplined. There can be different kind of thought processes. What benefits I am getting? So, in behavioral comes patterns and usage rates. So, this is generally we are talking about the consumer uh, products and their segmentation. But industrial or B2B markets, uh, you know, they have their own challenges and uh, the segmentation is obviously not so easy because first of all, you and me do not use it uh, or have a, you know, uh, uh, knowledge about it in our normal life. Uh, so, we do not use those products mostly. So, maybe there are machines which are uh, which are uh, helping in manufacturing a product or they are part of the process in cleaning, fabricating, whatever it is. Now, these are the items which we do not come across, right, until unless you are working in a particular industry or field. So, you will not come across. So, your knowledge is limited for these products. So, why it is difficult to segment these markets? Obviously, our knowledge is very less. And But majorly, if you look at it, four points are uh, given here. So, in terms of there are operating differences and within the product also if you see there are several challenges. Now, for example, operating differences. Now, it, see today if you want to let like, us say make a uh, product, let us say for example, even a glass, take it for a glass, right. Now, mobile glasses, we talk about mobile glasses. Now, there are different kinds of glasses which are used for example, the popular Gorilla glass, the Dragon Trail glass, Sapphire glass. Now, the, uh, they are not prepared in the same manner, right. So, there is a operating difference in you know the way you are preparing the product or producing the product, the same product also maybe, maybe can be produced in two different uh, ways. So, for example, in fine, in fine rate in the chemical industry, you know, uh, in the that the same uh, chemical might be produced in two different ways, right. For example, soda ash or something. And a product can have multiple applications. So, interestingly, uh, you know, uh, to add uh, to the complexity in the B2B market or the industrial market, the product can have multiple applications and if it has multiple applications, how do you understand the value of the product? Now, suppose a product was being utilized for only one type of work, one type of job, so, okay, you got it, but then suppose the same product can be utilized for another purpose also. So, can, uh, should not the uh, now seller charge little higher? Because now it understands that somebody is buying can utilizing the my product for two different purposes. So, automatically uh, I would like to segment and maybe charge a little high to of my, a little high my uh, the price of my product and I can gain my profitability. The third thing is what kind of a purchasing approach you have, right. 
So, segmentation in the B2B market can also get affected by the purchasing approach. Now, the purchasing approach could be like for example, you have a centralized purchasing process or a decentralized purchasing process and moreover you have lot of people, the entire buying center involved in the purchasing uh, you know of a B2B uh, product and it is not about a one man, it is about a multiple uh, number of people and a multiple process uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thing which happens during the purchasing. So, and finally, you know the people who are involved in the buying center or the buying process, the decision making unit, they also also differ. For example, let us say in certain companies, the finance department heads the you know makes the final call, takes the final call or certain departments, the engineering departments take the final call, the quality control department takes the final call. So, the people who are involved and what is their specialization or what is their interest that also places a, a difficulty in the uh, in the entire transaction process right so let's say you are selling a item let's say you are selling a b2b product and here the head of uh, you know the organization or the most important person in the organization is let's say a quality control guy and maybe your product is quality wise is not 100% or the most not the best uh, considered to be the best in the market so obviously if you try to go to such a company where the head is a quality conscious guy he will reject outrightly reject your product right but on the other hand if you move to a company where the finance uh, guy is the most important person the decision maker you have a fair amount of chance because you can maybe uh, compete on basis of cost and that is where you can take an advantage okay now segmenting variables uh, uh, can be divided into two main categories identifiers and response profiles right so a priori and a posteriori that means after what is happening let us see. So, when you talk about identifiers, so that means something that is uh, when uh, you go to a simple you learn about an organization or you try to uh, search information. So, on the very first right instance what kind of knowledge you have for example, companies can identify the demographics for example, what kind of industry it is, what is a firm, what kind of a firm it is, is it an original equipment, equipment manufacturer or an end user right what kind of you know uh, uh, company or a firm it is company size what is the geographical location where it is located what kind of a credit rating it has got the company has got. So, in terms of demographics these are some points that are you know vital. So, which you uh, can identify before you uh, really make a business with the company. In terms of operations you can learn about what kind of technologies they are using what level of usage heavy light or non-users of your products of the kind of products you are dealing with then uh, is it a do the comp does the company have a centralized purchasing process or a decentralized purchasing process so, and the product required is it like a standard product that they ask for or do they uh, ask for more customized product right and what kind of a purchasing situation is involved here so is it like a new task or a modified rebuy or a straight rebuy so we have understood this we have discussed it earlier also and what is the current attitude towards our firm? What does the buyer think about us? We are sellers and what kind of relationship do they maintain with their uh, suppliers and vendors? So, these are some information which you can collect it from the market by a little you know small little analysis right. But you know some uh, kind of uh, responses you will only come to know about after the really uh, dealing with them. So, for example, uh, the vendor product attributes which also is a part of the it, which affects the you know segmentation process for example, what is the overall value right they provide, what is the product quality does the cost buyer look into, what is the vendor reputation they are uh, you know uh, vendor reputation they are uh, looking into or uh, as a uh, you know buyer what kind of reputation they hold about innovativeness on time delivery lowest cost you know uh, 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 who is the lowest cost supplier in the market. And when you talk about the customer variables for example, the buying center and the makeup. So, when you deal with them only you will come to know about it. See what is the buying center the decision making unit and what comprises of it. What is the importance of the product that uh, they are buying from us? How important it is to them? That we can only come uh, to know later on. So, what kind of attitude do they have for the product and the corporate cultural you know characteristics right. So, is it like an innovative company or a company which believes in make to st uh, order a stock policy 
right or a company which believes in make to order policy what kind of a company it is. So, what kind of application do they make of the product and finally, what are the characteristics of the members of the decision making unit for example, are they risk in, uh, tolerant loyal to the vendors, what age group uh, does it comprise of largely and how much of experience do they have, what kind of educational qualifications they hold and which country do they originate because you see today most of the companies uh, have people from uh, working from across the globe right. So, we have really become a global uh, we have a global presence nowadays. So, all these are very important in the entire segmentation process right. So, uh, as uh, we have already discussed even you know this is one way of understanding so uh, how you say through a macro and a micro segmentation also you can think of segmenting the market. So, business market at least. So, macro consists of geography, customer type, customer size, how large is a small customer, small buyer or a large buyer. Sometimes the large buyers we may not be able to cater because the kind of demand they can have they, we will not be able to uh, comply to that. What kind of product use do they make, what is the value right and in terms of micro segmentation what is the purchasing criteria, strategy, importance and the personal characteristics. So, these are the ways different ways of looking at the uh, B2B segmentation process right. So, as, as I said for example, size of organization will be small, medium and large. So, if it is a what kind of industry do you want to cater maybe I can cater to medium industries not large or uh, let us say small maybe I do not know because of my because if I go for small ones I may have to make different designs for uh, you know the small small businesses and for large I may not be able, able to I may not be able to supply it such a large uh, to a such a large uh, buyer. So, I will target for medium kind of buyers and large buyers may charge uh, extremely they will negotiate at a for a heavy discount and all which I will I am not ready to give offer. Location wise also global, regional, local right and uh, in terms of sector if you see whether it is a retail sector, it is a engineering sector, financial services sector, what sector are you talking about and even if you talk about let us say one of these sectors also let us say now just take about financial sector, financial services market. Now, there can be banks, there can be you know for example, NBFCs right, then can be you know stock brokers right. So, so even here there are so many differences coming up. So, how do you deal with those now uh, all engineering are not alike right. So, there are precision instruments uh, manufacturers, there are heavy automobile manufacturer or heavy engineering goods manufacturers or uh, there are specialized chemical manufacturers. So, when you talk about engineering, when you talk about retail or even they are subdivided into several categories ok. And the end market that is served is like what kind of products or services are you talking about right. And in the choice criteria in the you know for the micro segmentation part when you uh, what you said uh, looked at is like for example, the choice criteria could be on basis of quality of the product you know the buyer might be looking at the quality of the product. He says delivery and other things are not so important, but the quality is the most important thing for us. Some, some buyers may look at delivery, no we want at the right time right uh, whenever we wish we want the product. So, what kind of value they are uh, you know delivery uh, deriving from our product as a so that also if we come to know then automatically the segmentation will become more simpler and clearer. So, for example, if the product that we are developing as a manufacturer if uh, it is uh, it can be it is considered to be of very high value to the buyer right then automatically we would like to segment such a you know target such a uh, you know uh, customer. Then the, then is supplier reputation you know what kind of a reputation the supplier has and what kind of a price uh, you know uh, they are selling. So, these are few points that comes in the choice criteria then the in the decision making unit the complexity right how complex how what is the hierarchy level and how effective has been in the past you know the business and the purchasing processes and all. So, these also points now individually if you start looking at them they are typically they are very complex there is not it is not so easy as it looks from outside they are complex in nature. But as I said in the last lecture also uh, last class when I discussed although it is very complex in the B2B market and everything is very tough right, but still you have to somewhere you know make segmentation you have to go for segmentation because that is the best way at least you can understand your customers well 
and the decision making process for example the decision uh, duration that is being taken for example sometimes the buyer may take a very long period of time you know to take a decision to make a decision and what kind of conflicts are generally uh, available in such a during a buyer seller you know relationship and all and finally when you talk about the buying class is it a regular product that they are buying or it's a kind of a new product right so all these different elements are very important for example if the buyer is buying for a first time and you want to target only those uh, buyers who are buying it for the first time versus buyers who are buying uh, who have been buying in the past now the buying approach will completely be different isn't it so just if you can uh, just uh, think about it right somebody is buying the product from you for the first time so maybe it will be a lot of challenges a uh, lot of hand holding sometimes you know it is very interesting that in computer industry this is software industry has happened many a times uh, software manufacturers do not like to or like to decide they decide they segment the market on basis of uh, buyers two kinds of buyers one let's say there is a buyer a versus b a is a buyer who does not want any uh, does not want any hand holding does not want any hand holding right any support any support because they feel we are good at we are sufficient we have sufficient knowledge we can handle the things and that's why they also charge a discount for it right but there can be some industries some some companies who say we do not have any idea about your software right we don't know what how this software works so you have to support us they need support they need support so if they need support automatically as a company your price may be little high than what you can offer to the others right so these are some kind of situations which help you if you understand how you are going to segment the market right and in terms of importance of purchasing also if you see right it could be not a very important product for the buyer or it could be a very important product for the buyer that means whatever i am selling to the uh, you know to the buyer for him how important that uh, you know item is right and what kind of a purchasing organization it is it is it a like a centralized purchasing process so this is what it shows or they follow a decentralized purchasing process so would you like to approach companies which have a centralized purchasing process or would you like to approach companies which have a decentralized purchasing process and in terms of innovation level of organization how innovative the companies are or it's like a follower or a laggard right we have done in the adoption life cycle we have understood what they are and what kind of personal attributes uh, people have in the buying center and the people or the people who are the most influencing lot in the buying center right so if you look at these points you will realize that they are you know uh, if you look at these points you will realize that every each of these points are very important and they play a very vital role so sometimes a, you may make a mix of it like when i am segmenting a market i i have once i have divided on basis of age on basis of the risk taking uh, you know how risk taking abilities they have how much of confidence they have on the buyer or or we as a supplier or what kind of a you know people they are like are they innovators who try test new uh, who test uh, you know try to test new products or they are followers who would like to see how the market reacts and then only they would like to buy so all these individual points are very very helpful for a buyer as yes, for a seller while he is trying to segment the market so just imagine if you as i have been repeating it is no doubt complicated but if you would have if you do not uh, do a segmentation what will happen maybe your clarity about the buyers will be pretty less and if with a low priority or low understanding about the buyers automatically your ability to sell your ability to delight the customer your ability to offer him better incentives will also come down and as it comes down obviously your sales will get affected your profitability will get affected so the best way is to no doubt is to always and always segment the market and whatever little information you have at least try to segment in that particular some particular manner and then try to fix or focus accordingly right so <clears throat> will i wind up the class here right and uh, i hope i have you have understood what i have tried to explain today and each point you can quietly sit down and think about it 
from the perspective of the organization that you are aware of, maybe your organization where you are working or you are studying or somewhere, some organization that you know and try to understand each of these points accordingly. They will, uh, you know, you may discuss with your peers, your friends, your faculty members uh, or somebody outside so that the more you can discuss with it, more level, number, uh, you know, amount of clarity will occur, right. Uh, so, I wish this knowledge uh, helps you in your future. So, uh, we will meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Thank you very much.